I honestly feel like I'm not the big, like, I'm not the first person to be like, ah, screw it, EA. Like, it's all EA's fault. But, like, I don't know. They came for my child in this one. <laughs> I'm getting really, really defensive of it. Welcome to the Crown Heathens podcast, where we talk about our favorite games, video game news, and just about anything else. My name is Matthew, and as always, I'm here with my best friends, Marissa and Sacco. And I'd like to remind everybody that there are no stupid questions, so I'm going to start us off with a stupid question. Oh, right now, Marissa, what's today's topic? Uh, so I, um, there's been some news that came out about my favorite gaming franchise. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. It's called Dragon Age. Yeah, no big deal mm, or anything. Mm. Is that the um, one with the, there's dragons, right? There is dragons. Yeah, they, they, they do not age, which is a mm. perpetual Twitter joke. Um, anyway, there was some news announced about it. And so today's question is just heavily in line with that, which is let's discuss microtransactions in video games oh, and boy. gaming as a service. And whether you think this is a good thing for the gaming industry or the worst thing ever. And I am smiling so big. So I'm trying to like calm myself down. Um, yeah, because I think they almost ruined my favorite gaming franchise with <laughs> um, microtransactions. So this is actually a topic uh, I brought it up with our uh, least played video games. When I was talking about sports games and like the, one of the reasons why I stopped like I pulled away from sports games is because of the microtransactions. Mm -hmm. And that being said, I play a whole fuck ton of Fortnite, way too much <laughs> Fortnite, like way more Fortnite than I would like to admit. Um, so I am like, I, I feel like I know a little bit about microtransactions. Yeah. So um, for anyone who's not familiar with the Dragon Age news that kind of dropped um, right at the end of February here, um, it was announced that they were going to make it was kind of a weird announcement to read, actually, because basically the announcement was like, hey, they decided to make Dragon Age a fully single player RPG, the next Dragon Age. Huh. And everyone in the Dragon Age community was like, are you saying that they weren't going to do that originally? Like. The Wait, interesting hold move. up. Like, hey guys, we're releasing <laughs> the game that uh, everybody's expecting to release. And we're like, uh, yes? Wait, wait, wait. What was it supposed <laughs> to be? So you. then um, some people found out basically from uh, some members of Bioware's like leadership team and stuff that um, kind of came forward to the press. Um, and they re revealed that basically EA had told Bioware to make dragon age a service game which is the most terrifying it, it was kind of like i read the news and i was sitting there and i was like i didn't even know i had this nightmare but this is my nightmare like it was one of those surreal moments where i'm like i didn't know i was afraid of this until it didn't happen because it almost happened and now I'm very heated about it. Like, I've never been so upset with a piece of Dragon Age news. Um, the, the thing that I don't understand is why they wanted to do it as, like, the fourth installment. Because immediately I'm thinking of Elder Scrolls and they have um, all the different, like, worlds of Elder Scrolls. And then they had Elder Scrolls Online. Yeah. And see, that I was, like, the their service game. Thought, right? Like, have, like, do this game as a service in the dragon age like universe but like make it a separate game like that would go alongside all of the other dragon age games so like you had you come up with dragon age online and then dragon age 4 comes out and the lead up to dragon age 4 like stuff starts happening in dragon age online that will tie into the, the dragon age 4 game like like if you wanted to like kind of give better examples like for with inquisition with all the rifts and stuff like the lead up to the launch of inquisition in dragon age online a rift would open up but no one like no explanation on it right like i you... think that's so cool like that as me like as somebody who like was in the dragon age franchise like that would have been really cool to like just be like playing online in like a world of 
Dragon Age, it literally in the Dragon Age setting, like in Thetis, yeah, yeah. and <laughs> just um, like suddenly, you know, everyone, I like scroll through Reddit and they're like, yo, guys, there was a rift. Like there's like this thing in the sky um, and we don't know why it's there. And then Bioware came out and said they have an announcement about like the next game. And like that hype would be just unreal. And I think that that's a really cool twist on what I normally like. My impulse is always like online bad and like <laughs> online kind of like <laughs> online kind bad. of like that thing, especially in terms of Dragon Age. And so the other really interesting thing about this this piece of news is everyone was kind of wondering like, well, what happened that made EA realize like that this was the stupidest idea that ever came into existence. I'm paraphrasing there. Um, might not be exactly <laughs> Just what everyone was saying. <laughs> but basically, um, it boiled down to two games that had come out. Um, one was um, Anthem, which is a Bioware game. And the other was Star Wars uh, The Fallen Order. Um, and the reason that they gave for both of those is that they saw the success of the star, like the re recent Star Wars game and how popular that one was with its sales. And so they saw the return on a single player game and then they watched Anthem just bomb, which Anthem has been really just like a absolute flop that came from Bioware. And I think there was redeeming qualities about it, but. It, ultimately it wasn't what bioware like is meant to succeed at in my opinion is this kind of online multiplayer game i just don't think it was their format and i so basically the combination of those two games made ea realize hey like maybe we shouldn't push really hard for bio uh for dragon age 4 to be an online game and me as somebody who's part of like the dragon age fandom who's very involved in um, well, I'm more of like a bystander. I watch everyone get really excited about stuff and I retweet it. But basically all these people going off about Dragon Age day in, day out, like the hype for Dragon Age 4 has never been higher, all this stuff. And I watch all these people be so invested in this franchise and the idea that EA like didn't realize how successful a single player game would be for the Dragon Age franchise is actually like infuriating to me because how are you that out of touch with with the fan base like like with the dragon age fan base how are you that out of touch with this specific niche of gamers that play dragon age and love it and like you don't know how like like I, the thing for obsessed me though, they are with it is that dragon age has like always been a single player game and they've always sold a lot and even dragon age inquisition one game of the year well, I mean, like, like Last of Us Two just won all of the Game Awards. Exactly, and that's zero the thing, multiplayer like, in that game. The first one had multiplayer, and the second one doesn't. The second like, one doesn't even have multiplayer. <laughs> yeah, like I just the thing is, is like, and and Sacco, you're totally right in this idea that like I would play the hell out of an online Dragon Age game where I get to just be this random person running around Thetis, and then like maybe I'm finding clues about like oh, here's where your Inquisitor went or whatever. But the yeah. other thing that's like not really applicable for this type of game is the amount of customization that they allow you to have on the story. Like the amount of impact every single character I've ever made in a Dragon Age game has on the story is what makes it so... Is Enjoyable. what makes Dragon Age Dragon Age. Like that's what sets it apart from you know elder scrolls or any of these other high fa high fantasy games is this idea that i get to go into that story and i get to have an impact on what's happening what's being told and how everything is playing out so when you take that away and you put it in an online setting or a multiplayer setting where i have to now maybe be at the whim of other people and i don't really know what it was fully going to look like because like how like, would like if you had killed a character in your campaigns yeah and you're so online let's take... like someone else could see the character like if someone else is now talking to that character that no longer exists in your storyline like how does that work right like well if you take the first dragon age so dragon age origins the ending of that game is either you i'm, live... I'm gonna play it soon spoil don't spoil I'm gonna play. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a liar! Oh my god! No, I'm not gonna play, Marissa. Please tell me everything that happens. 
Um, at the end of the game, you basically decide whether you live or die as the warden um, character and whether Alistair, who is one of your companions, who shows up in every other game or or doesn't if he dies, obviously, in the first one, but he has the potential to show up in every other game, whether he lives or dies, and you have um, the ability to impact whether, like, other characters live or die and how they... And, like, this is something that has, like, already offended people in the Dragon Age community, which was with Liliana, because in the first game, you could actually kill her. And so then she showed up in the third game as a very integral character. And everyone was like, well, I killed her in my playthrough. Like, what happened? And so there's, like, deep lore takes that are like, oh, well, this is why she didn't actually die. But, like, they, there's some people who are, like, still kind of mad at Bioware for not letting them make that decision. And I just don't imagine a world... Like, as cool as it would be, I'd love to run around Thetis, but they'd have to keep it so not story based so here's just to um go off of that because i feel like these um th this already exists in a game so kingdom hearts 3 um did something similar where they made a mobile game before kingdom hearts 3 and they were like oh like play the game like it was 100 percent a service game like you don't have to buy it but like it was pay to win 100 percent um, and you didn't have to, like, it was a free app, so, like, you can technically play it, but they're, like, it's super integral to the story, like, you have to play it, blah, 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 all this stuff. And then the impact that it had on Kingdom Hearts 3 was so minuscule that it felt like a waste of time spending, like, two years playing this mobile game. So, I feel like if they made a, a Thetis online and they couldn't make it impact the story, then it would feel almost worse. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it, it would like uh, the like way I'm the way I'm imagining a game like that being more like um um I I had a PS2 game. It was Lord of the Rings, and I forgot what it was called, but it it was, it was Lord like, of the Rings Conquest, and it was phenomenal. No, that it might was be a PS3 Conquest. game. Damn it! Um, <laughs> it was like I I don't remember what it's called, but you basically you played alongside the, the story, the, the movies. movies. Yeah, yeah. So like. You, I remember oh, you got. I to a remember point, this game. You got to a point where you were like underground, and like in the movie, someone threw something down a well, and then it almost hit you in the game, and they were like they played the cutscenes from the movies of like, like why certain things were happening in your in your little environment because things were happening in the movies. Like that's where I'm thinking about this game is like it would go alongside all the stories and maybe like add some information that they maybe couldn't yeah. fit in the in the, the actual campaigns like you, you're not gonna make any choices that's gonna change your gameplay but it would be like just extra lore that that is the way to do it and the only other way i could think of doing it which i'm i'm just kind of realizing now is you could really take it before origins because there is um there's a gap there is a lot there well there there's like it's all backstory, right? So you learning you're learning about like how Ferelden and Norle have been at war and like how basically like Ferelden gained its like independence and stuff like that. And then basically you could explore that a lot more and go back in time before the first uh the fifth blight, I believe, which is the the first Dragon Age game occurs during. Or you could go back even further and talk about like like um there's Andraste, and there's a whole bunch of figures like you could actually circle this around and have it be an online game. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, which is why, um, as mad as I am about this, the thing that I'm absolutely pissed about is not that they tried to do an online game or a multiplayer game or a, or a service game. It's how they tried to do it. The fact that they took a game that the fan base has been waiting for since 2016 when the last one came out they took the fourth game in established franchise and they were like i don't see this backfiring at all by putting by changing everything about how this game is made and what our users probably have come to expect and like the fact that ea like i'm just imagining all these suits in this stupid room being like, how can we make the most money off of this? And then actually thinking that a single player RPG in a franchise that is well established as a single player RPG would not once again be successful. Like that pisses me off more than 
any other part of this. And not not to just keep shitting on EA though, but like I don't understand why it's always EA too. Because like they did the exact it's same always thing. Always EA. And like <laughs> I tried to defend, getting like I, I'm getting so <laughs> hit me with it. Hit me with it. I I honestly feel like I'm not the big like I'm not the first person to be like ah screw it, EA like it's all EA's fault. But like I don't know they came for my child in this one. <laughs> I'm getting really really defensive of it because. How are you that out of touch? Like, I understand implementing microtransactions in other games. And I understand it how in some ways I could see how it could seem like a good idea. And I get that. And I get maybe taking a, uh, like an established franchise and wanting to make a service game where you do have a recurring um, payment model. Like, I totally get that we live in a capitalist society and blah, 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 blah. And how, you know, everything revolves around money. I understand that. Like, I get that. But to do it with this specific game just seems like setting Bioware up for the biggest failure that would eventually sink the company. Like, that's what it feels like. Like, they were, like, not trying to. I don't think they were trying to put Bioware under. But they definitely weren't giving Bioware an opportunity to succeed. No, and, like, I, they've also, like, I mean, it's not like this is the first time this would have ever happened. Like, you look at, um, I, mean, I, I know we, we, we were talking about uh, Shadow of War on their microtransaction kind of debacle earlier. Yeah. Um, I I wrongly threw Ubisoft under the bus. It was actually Warner Brothers Interactive. Fuck you, Warner Brothers um, Interactive. <laughs> but like it they had microtransactions in Shadow of War, a very single player game, and it went horribly. Everyone hated it. It was like they, they had they had so much backlash that they went through and got rid of all of the microtransactions. Like you can't buy anything in the game anymore. And like how like as EA, how do you look at that and look at like the success of something like Oblivion Online or the Elder Scrolls Online, like and and not be like, well, I mean, clearly, like like these online service games should be separate from the main storylines, and like kind of feed off the main storylines, and like you would get more sales off the main storylines and that kind of stuff. Like it's just it seems so like easy of a decision to just not fuck it up. Like, I don't understand, right? Like, not that's even, the thing. Like, not even what you're saying with, like, it, how did EA not see um, Warner Brothers or Ubisoft or any other company? But EA literally did the exact same thing with Star Wars Battlefront 2. So they released the first Star Wars Battlefront and they're like, okay, like little mini missions and um, like online play. And it's just the first, like the original trilogy. And then everybody was like, we want a story mode. Like, we want more from the Star Wars universe. Like, there's such a huge universe. We want more. And then EA released Star Wars Battlefront 2. And they're like, it has a story. But the online mode and like everything else was so bugged with microtransactions. And like somebody calculated it. And it was like, you can play 72. Um, it was like 7,200 hours or pay like a thousand bucks. And like, that's how you can unlock Luke Skywalker. And it's like, nobody's putting in like, yeah, you can put days or weeks into a game. Nobody's playing 7,000 hours like that's wall. never gonna happen like it was yeah it was it was ridiculous like it was like yeah you can we understand that you don't want microtransactions you can play the game and um like the more you play the more you'll unlock and then the guy literally was like to fully unlock luke skywalker i have to play for seven th seven thousand hours and that's just luke skywalker what if i want to play as any other character what if i'm playing as a sith and i'm on the dark side now i have to do the same thing like i have to put in 14,000 hours like that's never gonna happen well this mm -hmm. comes back to my greatest opinion so at the beginning of the podcast I can't really even remember how exactly I phrased the question but basically when do microtrans like when do microtransactions make sense because I actually don't hate the idea of them in the sense that I understand why companies uh why publishers why um, developers would want to put them in games to have some sort of residual income off of the game. I understand that. And I don't exactly think that they are always the worst thing ever. They really piss me off when I cannot play enough of the game to get make up for the microtransactions. So you're talking about this kind of with Battlefront, but or Battlefront 2. Yeah. But I think I'm thinking specifically of Call of Duty zombies which we all have sunk a lot of hours into definitely but, played so definitely have played it definitely familiar with it um they i think the most 
like the interesting thing is is I you've run into the people who are playing Call of Duty Zombies online and they have either gobble gums or um, elixirs or whatever the current model of that is. And I'm specifically thinking of Black Ops 3 because I, I played that one online the most. Um, that was when I had the best internet connection. So, um, but you would run a good into time. people who it was a good were time like, <laughs> who like had a stupid amount of like perkaholic gobble gums or something like that, where they would just like they would just pop them every every round to make sure that they didn't die, basically. And they really were the people that you could tell, you know, had bought a whole bunch of stuff. They had put money because you could buy the gobble gums. But I also had a lot of uh perkaholics and i also had a lot of like the really good gobble gums because i played it a lot yeah and i didn't i was never really that upset because there was like there was a level of achievableness <laughs> that's so not a word but <laughs> there was a way to achieve it without buying the thing there was and a good it might have been hard it. But it, it, yeah, you had to sink a couple hours into it like you had to do this you had to do that and like it didn't always seem super fair but at that point, I was like, you know what? Like, I get it. Like, I just have to play more and that's OK. And then this really cool thing happens where you actually get good at the game. And then when you actually get those really good um, like perks and stuff like that, you are good enough to use them in a way that will help you, like, get through the really hard Easter eggs like Garod Crow or whatever it is. Like, that's where I found it. Find a benefit to like like that's that kind of microtransaction i'm fine with if you look me in the eye and tell me i will never achieve that or it's almost impossible to achieve that level to get that thing but it's going to make my gameplay so much better or so much easier and then i see people who are just buying it like that's when you get these gamers who start hating microtransactions to their very core well so that's pretty much like the sports games where it's like you can unlock the cards but yeah if the people that are sinking hundreds of dollars into it they're going to just get immediately better like yeah, that's exactly. basically what it comes like, down to right like yeah you can earn them but like i can't exactly play why fast enough I don't... to get them right like yeah that's yeah. exactly why i would like i don't find a lot of value in nhl in particular like i should be part of their I really should be part of their main demographic and I'm not because I'm not willing to sink a whole bunch of money into microtransactions and so I'm never going to be good enough to game it, to enjoy it with all these people who do have the really good players. Well, even even EA with Star Wars Battlefront 2 like originally it was impossible and like they released a statement also saying hi like we're sorry that we released a game that um felt like we've we've edited the game completely and we're sorry that you felt that it was pay to win. We made it a lot easier to unlock like the characters and, and like level up the characters. And now the game is great, but nobody's playing it anymore because it's already too late. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if, yeah you, I... if you wanted to go to games that do it good, I think that Fortnite. While like say whatever you want about it, like there's a lot of issues with that game. Uh, and there's a lot of issues with the game's community, but the way they implement the battle pass was actually really good. If you're strictly looking at um, the the battlegrounds like uh, drop down style, because the thing that a lot of people might forget is that Fortnite was supposed to be a story driven game when they first announced it in 2017. Uh, I don't know if you knew that, guys. God, that was so long. Ago. 2017. And it was like Fortnite saved the world and you it was a co-op game and it had a story. And, and they basically said, like, we don't have enough money to fund this game, so we're going to make a battle pass and we're going to use the money to create the game. And then they started making money and then they got rich and then they're like, save the world? Fuck that. <laughs> have the yeah. Mandalorian. <laughs> like, let's yeah. have a Disney collab. And like that part's bad. But even just um, like basically the way that Fortnite does their battle pass is. Once you buy the battle pass, you unlock challenges. So like the game itself is be the last person standing. So at the end of the day, if you don't want to buy the battle pass, you can still be the last person standing. They unlock challenges. So if you're like me and you're probably not going to be the last person standing, they're like, drive a car 10,000 miles, drive, like do a trick, like um, build a house at, at like this location, do a dance on top of this mountain. And it gives you, oh, okay. So like this game that I was never playing, like the first time I played, I was like, this is so stupid. Like, I'm never going to be the last person standing. What's the point? And now it's like, oh, yeah, like, I'll just do the challenges and unlock costumes and characters that I like. 
that are strictly aesthetic. So you're not going to be better at the game. Yeah. Like that, that model kind of works. I like the aesthetic, um, like focusing the microtransactions very much on the aesthetic component of the game. Um, I think that that's the smartest way to go about it. I don't really understand why there's so many publishers who are willing to push gamers to become so upset with microtransactions when there's a really, I feel like, easy out in just make everything about it aesthetic stuff. Like, they get blinded by the money. I mean, that's the end of the thing, right? They, like, they yeah, just... Totally, totally. I, I understand corporate greed. Everybody sucks. But like that part really is going to... Like it's 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 part of the reason why microtransactions are hated so much. It's not if you're blocking part of the story or part of the actual ability to be good at the game with money, like I'm never going to play your game. And like, I just find that really harsh. But like if you're doing it for aesthetic stuff, like that's been around for a long time where you could buy like downloadable packs and stuff where you could change the outfit of the characters. And I only like. Like, then you were just a child who was like, oh, my mom's not going to buy that for me, but I wish she would. Like, that was more of the feeling. You weren't, like, willing to trick your mom into accidentally paying a whole bunch of money for a Fortnite. Like, whatever. Yeah. Not Fortnite, but, like, for stuff on Battlefront because otherwise you were bad at the game. Yeah. Yeah. But but when it comes to aesthetics, you still get, like, large groups of people. So Overwatch is a prime example. The gameplay is strictly not affected um everything every transaction is um it, it's strictly aesthetic like you can get different songs you can get different like stickers you can get different costumes um and then the way they do it is loot boxes so you can't actually buy like that's the kind of scummy way that they go about it is like you can't actually buy the costume but you can buy loot crates and you might get right. the costume yeah. but at the end of the day it's still aesthetic and like in the crates you can get like in-game currency to buy the costume but you can also get that currency by leveling up. So it's like, yeah, you can play the game, level up, and eventually unlock the costume. Or you can just buy loot boxes, which is gambling. And in uh, some countries, they actually make the game rated 18 plus because it is gambling. Um, yeah, and that makes sense, too. But, but, and then it's so easy because every single season, they just have a new costume, right? It's Halloween. Put a pumpkin on it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's February. This person has a heart. Like there's so many different like you don't have to change the costume that much and you can just keep loading and loading and loading and like the character can look the exact same and like it's summertime they're wearing shorts like it's it's cute yeah. and people are going to people are going to buy it people will spend money on this stuff so why are these companies still being like you know what we need you know what we need more service games we need to build a story <laughs> game that you can't you can't you want to play the final boss you have to buy it like that's so it's fucking just... stupid and like the thing with Fortnite and I believe Overwatch though I've never played it and like there's other versions Apex Legends um even Call of Duty the Warzone reason, like the thing about some of these games though is they are free to play at first in the sense that they they honestly like putting some stuff behind the the paywall makes more sense in those situations if I'm buying a game for $90 or plus, depending on if I'm getting a deluxe edition or whatnot, like, and you tell me as soon as I get into the game that I'm going to be missing content or an experience or the ability to be good because I'm not going to sink another $100 into microtransactions, like, I am stunned at like the audacity <laughs> really i'm stunned at your audacity <laughs> like that is so absolutely stupid to me whereas like if it is a free-to-play game i get it a little bit more too like you didn't pay for the base game so to pay for the other stuff that's fine in my opinion like i i don't find something hugely wrong with that i think sometimes they get it a little bit too far still and i would agree with that but at least there's like uh well the game itself was free and now I have to pay for the extra stuff on top. I just want to say something really quickly. I agree with you a hundred percent. I don't know um, if you, if, if this was implied, but I kind of heard it this way. Overwatch, just to clarify, you do have to buy the game. It's not a free to play okay. game, but, okay. but the costume, like it's a first person game. So you don't even see your costumes that like you're unlocking. So <gasps> the loot boxes, horrible. like the loop, like people have complained, but like, why is it? Like, why do you guys push the loot boxes so much? Like, you can't even see your character. And, and like, the developers literally said, like, play the game. Like, 
if you don't want to buy yeah, them, I, don't buy them. Like it's a first player game. Play the game how you want. Um, but I agree with you hundred percent for like Fortnite, Apex, um, Call of Duty, Warzone, where it's like this game is free. Download it. Give us money somehow. But even yeah, like Call yeah. of Duty didn't start off like um, there were loot boxes in like I think it was like Infinite Warfare or, or Advanced Warfare or something, and and they had like that was a that was an eighty dollar game, like a hundred and thirty bucks if you wanted the digital deluxe edition, and you you like the loot boxes had better weapons in it. Like you had, if you wanted the good weapons, you had to buy a loot box or you had to like play to unlock it, but you would like it maybe one every 15 to 20 the, matches. The concern there though, is that did the, did playing the game give you them enough that it felt like it wasn't no. broken? No. Okay. Like you, you'd get like, um, cause there were like different levels of loot boxes too. You'd get like a common loot box every like 10 to 20 matches. But if you wanted the legendary or the rare items, like there's very little chance they were going to be in the common loot box. They, I mean. I think again, I can't remember if it was Infinite Warfare or Advanced Warfare, but like I know for sure they did that in World War Two. Yeah, they transitioned. World War Two was just aesthetic. Like you had those little baubles that you can get for your guns, and you can get like different melee weapons and stuff like that. Didn't affect the damage at all, but it just you had it now instead of having a knife, you had a shovel kind of thing, or like you had a which is pretty cool. And I I would try and get yeah right. So I Matt, there are no stupid questions, right? Uh... Uh-oh. I mean, I did say that. I, I was, I was gonna try and pull some. I was gonna try and pull some backwater way of making that. No, there's no stupid questions, Marissa. Hit me with it. All right. So there might be a um, stupid answer though. That I fully expect. All right. So I just want to know: Do you guys actively avoid games that are heavy on microtransactions? Marissa, I play Fortnite. Yeah, I mean, I like I play Fortnite <laughs> regularly. I feel like the okay, only- so. The only game I play that like kind of has microtransaction is NHL, but I just don't play that hut mode anymore. Right. Because I just don't I, one, I don't have the time to sink as much like time as you need to to like unlock the good players, and two, like I I, I don't see the like benefit of it anymore. Like I mean, really, like at the end of the day, by the time I have unlocked good enough players to compete against other people, they've already bought new players that are better. Yeah. So. I don't actively avoid games that have microtransactions in them, but as soon as I learn that, I need to know more about the game before I'm willing to buy it. And so where is the line? Like, I don't know if that's the same for you guys, but like, I have a very specific line. And my line is, is if it's not just aesthetic, I'm probably not buying that game. If it's not just microtransactions for aesthetic components... I'm probably not purchasing it because I don't trust that I'm going to have a good experience playing that game. I agree with you 100%. That's also how I do it. I would like to clarify something also about Fortnite. Um, so the way that I that they do it is in the battle pass, if you get to level 100, you get enough in-game currency to buy the next battle pass. So like I've never actually purchased a skin or anything. Like I paid the $10 initial fee and then... I just leveled up to level 100. Like I make sure like I have two months to do it. So I've never actually given like I've never actually paid into it. Um, That being said, this season, I really didn't play that much and I probably didn't get enough in-game currency. So I probably will not be playing like that was pretty much it. I played it while like. I played it enough so that like it it itself was like kind of like a regenerating thing and I always got it to level 100 this this time. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to put money in um right so so that's the right. thing that makes sense when it comes to like call of duty black ops like i haven't touched warzone um i'm playing zombies and i'm playing the online and there's not really there's a battle pass system there but it it's again strictly aesthetic and i don't care enough to like actually try and get like cool stuff like it's zombies i'm just gonna play for this like i'm gonna try and do the easter egg or it's online i'm gonna play prop hunt a little bit you know what i mean like i'm gonna run around <laughs> yeah. and and trust me like i love that but i don't care what it looks like you know so prop i I'll, hunt is is an underrated mode. it's 100 percent underrated yeah. love prop hunt um but again like those are things that it's i'm not gonna i wasn't stopped because of that but again i think it was strictly aesthetic and i wouldn't play fortnite without the battle pass because like without those challenges it's kind of like i'm not gonna play to try and get to number one like i don't really care right. about the battle royales and now that i don't have enough i'm not gonna put more money into it like, it was just kind of like that game to throw on in the background. Um, mm-hmm. That being said, I didn't buy uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2 because I knew it was um, so heavy on on that 
Right. So I didn't buy it until they fixed it. And they were like, oh, we fixed it. And then I played it and there was nobody on the server. So I was like, this was a waste of money anyways. Really quickly, I have one more question before we move on to games we're currently playing. So I would like to ask what you would like to see with microtransactions in gaming. Like, what is your ideal situation? Put in a battle pass. I don't care. They're perfect. They're a perfect cycle where it's like you have two months of content and then um, we're going to switch it. We're going to start over. I That has no problem. I'm no problem with that. Make it the side aspect. So like Black Ops 4 didn't have a campaign, but they added um, like the blackout mode and it was like that first Battlegrounds um, play style. And they got rid of the campaign and I was like, that sucks. Black Ops, Call of yeah. Duty, Cold War. They have zombies. They have a campaign. They have multiplayer. And they're still updating Warzone. Perfect. Like, that is the yeah. perfect way to do it. Um, if you want, do not make a story mode game that relies on microtransactions. That's horrible. Yeah. Yeah. But if it's strictly aesthetic and like even like the battle pass, honestly, a lot of people, you can shit on battle passes as much as you want. They're the perfect system. Yeah. Like yeah, when, they, it, they when it comes down to it. Uh, Sacco. Um, I'm gonna have to agree with Matt. I think, um, like, make it aesthetic. Don't make it like you need it to compete kind of thing. Like, it can't be played right. to win, especially if you're paying for the game already. Um, like hut. Like, I can't. I like I, I'm I'm I already paid seventy bucks for the game. I'm not paying anymore. Like, I'm not doing yeah. it. Like, and I know people spend hundreds of dollars after that they've already paid seventy bucks. It's just like, I don't like if you wanted to like give me new jerseys or whatever. Like, whatever. I guess like that could be my transaction but like i get it in a sports game there really isn't that much customization you can do um well there isn't currently in my opinion but that's well i mean like cast uh, yeah but even I, still like how many jerseys do the leaves have like you can't well really that's the thing like it, it's harder and harder because it's like you kind of have to rely on the teams that you get to pick but like in eashl you get to like like they do have a bunch of different jerseys you can you can buy um but like not like you don't have to buy like i you can unlock them with challenges and stuff but you could also just buy the um uh, hockey bags to like unlock the jerseys right. and, and whatnot but um yeah i mean if you want to make it aesthetic i'm okay with it i'm not going to buy it personally unless it's something like that i really want but I, I i don't i can't think of a like an example that i'd really pay for right now but um right. yeah so this is uh maybe so my answer is going to be pretty much the same, and I'm going to throw it back to Dragon Age one more time. So I think one of the, and this wasn't necessarily actually an example of a microtransaction, um, but it was something that I didn't love. And I don't talk about stuff that Bioware has done that I don't love a lot, but one of the things that they did in Dragon Age Inquisition was they put... um. And I'm not going to spoil anything for you, Matt, because I know we're playing it still. So I'm not I'm going to be really light on I appreciate any context that. here. But basically, the game ends and everything feels wrapped up. And then they released a DLC, which was the I epilogue of the story. It. And having gone, I went like a year or something without pay playing the epilogue because I was like, I didn't really understand I just thought the DLC was a new like area to unlock. And I was like, I'm not going to pay for that. Like, that's fine. I was in university at the time. Didn't really want to spend the money. And then I learned that it actually progressed the story. And I was actually pretty that's upset about you. that. Because um, I felt like that was super unfair. And then I was like, well, maybe it's just a little extra story. And without spoiling what happens in the epilogue, I don't understand how anyone, like, you cannot play that game and not play the epilogue because it's not finished. Yeah. But it feels and finished. And that, it feels finished, which is maybe me. the worst part. My ears are yeah, because you have, you have no idea that it's not finished, right? Like, Yeah, you have no idea it's not finished. And I, I think that that is my worst, like, that's what I hate the most if you're locking part of the story that i just spent like over a hundred hours yeah. being prepared to it, get up to it doesn't feel and good. you lock that behind a paywall just increase the like honestly increase the initial cost of the game but give me that like you should not that should never be behind a paywall 
in my opinion. Yeah, paywalls paywalls suck. Paywalls are not good. Don't don't do them. All right. And so with that like pleasantry, um, we're not gonna talk about what games we want you to play out of this podcast because it's filled with a little bit more rage than usual. Um, so I'm going to discuss, uh, what rather we're going to discuss the games that we're currently playing and I'm going to start this one. So I am actually playing, um, Star Wars. I am playing, paying some homage to the game that saved Dragon Age 4 because <laughs> I think that that is my duty. I love to, that. Um, I, I was completely sold on it when I found out that that was why I was getting a single player. RPG for Dragon Age 4. So I am playing through that and it's actually quite good. It's basically like I'm not very far into it. I'm basically just parkouring everywhere and it's it's honestly very enjoyable. I'm playing Matt, the last of us. I find I, I can see my face. <sighs> so I I I re-downloaded it. Uh I kind of mumbled just just to clarify guys. I I'm playing The Last of Us. Um, I passed the point that I stopped last time. So where did um, you stop last so, time? So I, so I'm and I'm also taking notes. So like I'm prepared to have a Last of Us podcast. Hey. Um, definitely Amazing. look forward to that because we will do it. Um, so do you guys remember Bill's Town? Yeah, that's the one with yeah. all the traps, right? Yeah, there's all the traps. Yeah. Um, you have to go to the school to get the pickup truck. Like you're going, you need to get an engine. Like you want to start the engine um that's where i stopped so i kept saying like i think there was a bus or a school there was in bill's town it's like probably 10 i, I want to say 10 hours is probably not even that it's so like it's so early on in the game uh that's yeah, where i stopped no, for sure like i didn't even get to pittsburgh the first playthrough um that's where i that's what i'm doing now i also started playing uh we happy few and I haven't played too much of it, maybe just like a couple hours, but We Happy Few looks like it's going to be a really good game. I'm very excited to finish that. I know I sound miserable about The Last of Us. I am excited to finish The Last of Us also, um, just so we can talk about it. I don't know if my opinion is going to change. I'll be honest with you guys. That's I, okay. I'm, I appreciate that. I will, I will finish though. Like I'm yeah, too far I, gone now where I'm going to try and finish it. We appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate the effort for sure. Um, I think you'll enjoy. I know we've talked about this outside of the podcast. I, I think you'll enjoy the second one in a very different way. So if you do end up playing um, that one, um, I'm kind of excited to hear your thoughts on that because I think you will have more of a it will elicit more of a response. Let's say I'm going to play both and I am taking notes. So we will have a last of us podcast. So stay tuned for that amazing all right well, Sacco, what are you playing um uh unfortunately i'm playing resident evil 7 what do you mean unfortunately it's 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 <laughs> is a it good creepy game man. <laughs> is it good it's, it's a good game uh i i have never played any of the resident evil games do you have um, to play the other ones are you following along so far i want to play that I, game I, so I, badly as far as i can tell it has nothing to do with any of the games or yeah, even if, if it did i haven't noticed any connection this is making me so uncomfortable uh, i want to play that so badly <laughs> um I it's it's a it's a fantastic looking game. Uh, the environment is super creepy and super tense, and they've done a really good job of making you feel like you're gonna die every second. I love it. Um, and yeah, no, it's um, it's scary for sure. Uh, I don't think Marissa could play it. Um, I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you there. I am not. That is not my cup of tea. Yeah, no, but it's uh, it, it's a really fun experience so far. Yeah, I again, I I didn't. It, it, it kind of spawned from the our horror games, uh, or not horror games podcast. It was our least played genre podcast, but it ended up being we talked kind of about horror, horror games, games yeah. The horror um, game and sports game podcast, or both horror it, games, depending on how you view microtransactions. The one where I thought exactly. I was going to die before we yeah, filmed. That's the one. That one. Um, yeah, yeah and uh, it was on the Game Pass, so I downloaded it, and yeah, no, I'm, I'm enjoying it, but it's definitely uh, definitely a scary game. Exciting. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna add that to my list. You should. It's well, very well done. All right, as always, thank you so much for listening. For more Crown Heathens content, you can check out our YouTube account. It's called Crown Heathens. Uh, you can also check out our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook accounts. They are all at Crown Heathens. And until next time, thank you guys so much.